Welcome to Vision Sunday, everybody. Come on, Vision Sunday. And we're gonna be baptizing. We're gonna be baptizing some folks here in just a few minutes. And, uh, but I thought, you know, I, I was just glancing over, uh, like I, I know we've got a lot of things going on in the Middle East right now. I thought it'd be good to just pray for us and then for, let's pray for Israel as well. Can we do that? Lord Jesus, we just pause right now, God. And uh, Lord, there's just, there's unrest, Lord, uh, in the world. And we do, we pray, you call us to pray for the peace of Israel. And so we do that. And Lord, as uh, surrounding uh, neighboring nations are getting involved, Lord, I pray that you would just intervene, God, and you would protect and you would surround and cover. Give wisdom, Lord, I pray in this hour, Lord. It seems it just, uh, it's your people. And we, uh, we pray for that, uh, that city, that nation, even now, Lord, we pray. And God, here as we're together, Lord, this, this moment in our announcement and where we're going as a, as a people, Lord, what you're calling us to, Lord, we just need your wisdom, your grace, your heart. Thank you for all that you're doing in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you for being here. My name's Gary. If I've not met you, lead pastor here at Legacy and uh, Vision Sunday. If you're taking notes, you could write this down, the miracles in the many, the miracles in the many. Uh, the Bible talks about vision. In Proverbs chapter 29, and uh, just kind of the old, uh, I don't know, old, but the ESV, I think, says something. The King James says, without vision, the people perish. Without vision, the people, another translation says, they wander aimlessly. Uh, uh, without vision, a different translation says, the people cast, out, cast off restraint without clear vision. So the good question is, what is, what is that vision? And I think... I think the message paraphrase really captures it well. It says this, if people can't see what God is doing, they stumble all over themselves. But when they attend to what he reveals, they are most blessed. When they can't see what God is doing, they stumble all over themselves. So what it's saying is if we attend to if we give attention to, focus, respond to what he is doing and what he is saying and what he's revealing, blessing follows. Like that, that's, that ought to like perk our ears up a little bit, like, ble- like paying attention to what God is doing, what he's saying. And my, really my prayer today is that God would give you, that God would give us eyes to see what he's doing and what he's saying because he's working in your family. He's doing stuff in your marriage. How many know that God's doing stuff in your marriage? God's working. God's, God's, God's at work in your church. God's working in your church. So see what God's doing. Uh, and on your job, he's working. He's positioning you in front of people. I mean, like, like Right? People can't see what God's doing. They stumble all over themselves. That's an interesting, I don't want to get lost in this, but it becomes, it's almost like if people can't see what God's doing, they really get into themselves. Does that make sense? Like they get, they get tangled up in themselves. And so it's interest, It's good to know, and I like the way Henry Blackaby says it, find out where God is working and join him. Find out what God's, where he's working. Look around, take, you know, have some, uh, like, like Paul talks about, walking circumspectly, seeing all around you, full-orbed, right? Like look all the way around you, see what God is doing. And so today is about, we, we want you to see and hear what God's doing in your church. If you consider legacy your church, God is working. He's doing exciting stuff. And so if I were to take what God is doing and sometimes you have to, you have to go back to, to, look, to go forward, you have to look back to go forward. I wrote it like a, like, a, like a story. So here we go. Once upon a time. Once upon a time, it was about six and a half years ago. As a church, by the way, we celebrate seven years in October. I, isn't that great? It seems like yesterday and it seems like forever. 
like somewhere in there, there was a, well, okay, we'll just get ahead of myself. I'm telling a story. Six and a half years ago, a church was born in the city of Liberty Lake with a small band of believers who had a vision. From the inception, this church was destined to be so much greater than one person or one couple's vision. From the very beginning, the church relied on, leaned on the gifts, talents, abilities, and resources of those that God brought in and continues to bring in. God demonstrated from the start that it was his church, his idea, his timing, and that the people of that early community of believers just needed to faithfully serve the gospel of hope and love people well. Faithfully share the gospel of hope and love people well. And that's what they did. From the very beginning, the church settled into the city to serve that city, to reflect Jesus to their community and their region. From the very beginning, God showed the people of Legacy Church that he would rewrite futures. He would rewrite futures. That he would draw people to himself if, in fact, he was lifted up. All he wanted from the people was their yes. Yes, I'll go. Yes, I'll serve. Yes, I'll give. And yes, I'll pray. And the church began to grow, not just in number, but in strength. That strength and resolve was put to the test when at a young age they had to overcome the uncertain effects of a global pandemic. And that's what they did. With the help of the Holy Spirit and a little bit of grit, they overcame. And in fact, it was that year, the year of the pandemic, with an empty building, they became a self-supporting, self-sustaining, sovereign church. And everyone knew, everyone knew it was because God was with them. So let it be known, far and wide, God is writing the story of Legacy Church. And it's a beautiful story. And it's still being written through the lives of the beautiful people who make up this wonderful faith community. And I can tell you, as certain as I'm standing here, there's some, this, this is a church full of beautiful people. And the story's being written, and it, it's, you see, you see Legacy, we're, we're a church we're a church on mission. We're a church on mission. Geographically, yes, by proximity, by location. I love the fact that we are literally on mission, right? Like, like people, they ask the question, where's Legacy? So where's Legacy Church? They have to answer that question. The answer is always, oh, you mean the church on mission? <laughs> yes, that church, oh, Legacy. The church on mission, yeah, that's legacy. <laughs> right? And while that's cute, and it's nice, and it's missional, may it never be a misnomer. May it never be a misrepresentation, a misleading name. A misnomer is a name attributed to something that really isn't that thing at all. Guinea pig. Well, it's not a pig, and it's not from Guinea. In fact, if you go to Peru, you're going to find guinea pig on the menu. It's a delicacy there. It's a rodent from the Andes. Anyways, okay. Here's another koala bear. I mean, a koala bear is not a bear. It's a marsupial. <laughs> right? It's a misnomer. A starfish is not a, it's not a fish. Funny bone. <laughs> it's, it's not a bone. And it, it ain't funny when you hit it, right? It's a nerve. I'm looking. We got doctors in the house. It's the ulnar nerve, right? Ulnar or something like nerve. Those are misnomers. Misnomers are a name given to something that is a misrepresentation. And how tragic it would be to be the church on mission and yet not really be on mission at all. No, we're the church on mission, not just by geographic, not just by street name, not just by happenstance, not just coincidentally, but we're placed here by Jesus to reach a city, to reach a region. 
So the point is, if we're going to bear the name, legacy, the church on mission, come on, let's represent. Let's represent. The question I want to answer today in Vision Sunday is what does it mean to be a church on mission? What should it look like? And I think the early church paints a really good picture. Acts chapter 2, verse 42 says this. Just follow closely. We're going to read this. We're going to lean into this text about three different times. And they devoted themselves, the early church, first church, they devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and fellowship and the breaking of bread and prayers. And awe came upon every soul. And many wonders and signs were being done through the apostles. And all who believed were together and had all things in common. And they were selling their possessions and belongings and distributing the proceeds to all as any had need. And day by day, attending the temple together and breaking bread in their homes, they received their food with glad and generous hearts, praising God and having favor with all the people. And the Lord added to their number daily, day by day, those who were being saved. So he asked the question, what's a church? What does it mean to be a church on mission? I think we have to know that on Vision Sunday. What does it mean to be a church on mission? Number one, a church on mission exists to see futures rewritten. Yes. It's why the, it's, the, it's the first one right out of the gate. What is a church on mission? Acts chapter two, verse 47b. And the Lord added to their number daily, day by day, those who were being saved. From the beginning of the church, the inception of the church, God established that it would be a place where life transformation takes place. Now, it's not the only place. You can leave somebody to Christ at the farmer's market. You can leave somebody to Christ at Yolks or at the gym or at coffee, right? But it, but it would be a community where people could come to Christ. Our vision statement says it well, I think, that we are a community rewriting futures for generations to come. And here's how we do it. By creating opportunities for people to encounter Jesus in life-changing ways. We, we, you know, Patty and I, for almost seven years that we, since we planted Legacy, we've never been bored you just can't be bored. You can't have a mission statement like that and be like, well, honey, what, what, what's on your calendar this week? Eh, nothing. Not much. I never, like, we're on, we're on, we're, we gotta create opportunities for people to encounter Jesus. And, and that's just not a pastor's thing. It's all of us thing. Create opportunities. Have conversations with people so that they can encounter Jesus in life-changing ways. What does futures rewritten mean? What does that even mean? What are we saying? I, I, like, I like to say it this way. I once was lost, but now I'm found. I was blind, but now I see. Come on. That's an old hymn, by the way. Side note, Amazing Grace. Like I was walking a hundred, I was walking this way in my life. I was doing my thing, just going down my, this path, you know, and the Bible says the, the you know, like kind of the, the steps of a, as you're, like a, a man's walking, the ways of a man, he thinks, he thinks he's walking down a good path, but in the end, it says, it leads to destruction. Here it is. There's a way that seems right to a man, but in the end, it leads to destruction. I was going down that path, Gary, but all of a sudden, I had an encounter with Jesus, and I turned 180. I turned 180, and I said, no, I don't want to go that way anymore. I want to go towards Christ. I want to go towards hope. That's a future that's been rewritten. We got some baptism candidates that are gonna be baptized here in just a few moments. And, and listen, that's not just a, a decision that you make that only affects you, but it affects generations around you that follow you. My, like, like when my great-grandfather walked down the altar and he gave his heart to Jesus, I wasn't even born yet, obviously. When he made that decision to follow Christ, that affected my grandmother. And then that affected my grandmother, that affected my mom. And my mom began to follow Jesus. And then my mom led us. And so it had a four gener. Now it's affected my kids, my son up here leading, right? It's a generational thing. So it's, it's massive, it's huge. Future's rewritten. Acts chapter two, I, I, I love this, that Paul Peter's, first sermon after he preaches this anointed Holy Spirit message. 
says, so those who received his word were baptized and they were added that day about 3,000 souls. That's amazing. The church on mission is about rewritten futures. Rewritten futures is about all about, rewritten futures is all about life transformation. So why is that important? So well, why is that important? Why do we need to be reminded about this, Gary? You have this everywhere, everywhere around the church, every time we talk, you got, you got it on shirts, you got it on the pins, futures rewritten, futures rewritten. We're like, we're getting sick. No, you can't get sick of that because that's our why. That's why we're here. That's our, that's, listen, if you forget your why, if you lose the why, you lose your way. We can never lose the why. We could, that's our why. We exist so that futures can be rewritten. Futures rewritten is our why. It was definitely, it was definitely Paul's why. Think about that account in scripture when he was in prison, Paul and, he and Paul, Paul and Silas were in prison and they had been beaten and all they did was just share Christ and they cast a demon out of a girl who was being abused and uh, used for money-making purposes and they were cast in, in prison and jail beat and, and in stocks, they were, they were in chains and in, at midnight they were worshiping. Man, Lord, help us that we're in the middle of trial and, and struggle that we find a place to worship. It's not like, ah, I worship when things get better. No, in the middle of prison, they were worshiping and God responded. There was an earthquake, chains fell off and prison, like, right? Like chains fell off. Paul and Silas could have jetted, could have bolted, like get out of jail free, man. And the, the prison guard, the Philippian jailer, like he's ready to fall on his sword because Prisoners are getting out. I'm, I'm dead. I'm, I might as, well, might as well just start. And Paul yells, read it, Acts, Acts, Acts 16. Paul says, don't hurt yourself. We're all still here. Why did Paul say that? I'll tell you why. Because he didn't forget his why. He remembered the why. The why, the why is futures rewritten. So the, the, the Philippian jailer sees them, right? Put the torch up, whatever the lights were. The Bible says he called for lights. I'm thinking, I don't think, hey, flip the lights on. I think it was a torch. <laughs> That's funnier in my head than. <laughs> Acts 16, sirs, he said, what must I do to be saved? And they said, believe in the Lord Jesus and you'll be saved. Future's rewritten, you and your household. Come on. And they spoke the word of the Lord to him and to all who were in his house. And he took them the same hour of the night, washed their wounds, and he was baptized at once. He and all his family. Isn't that powerful? Dad said yes to Jesus, and it had a ripple effect all the way down through the family. Amen. Come on. Paul never forgot his why, not even in prison. So that's, that's what a church on mission looks like. Church on mission looks like life transformation. And right now, we're gonna baptize some folks. I'm gonna ask our baptism, right in the middle of the message, we're gonna baptize people because this is our why. Come on, give them a hand. Give them a hand. So, you know, you know your job is as they come, they go down in that water representing dying to the old self. It represents dying to the old self, coming up new in Christ. When they come up out of that water, you're gonna do what? Oh, yeah. You got to let them, you got to give it all, uh, I mean, just give it up in the house. Come on, let's baptize. Ladies and gentlemen, Legacy Church, that's the why. That's the why. When you see somebody backing into the baptismal tank, that's the why. Right? Just brand new in Christ. Now our youth staff gets to walk alongside of Zach, right? We're gonna make sure Zach gets grounded, gets discipled, gets trained in what it means to be a Christ follower. I love it. I love that. That's that's spontaneous baptism right there. That's spontaneous. I love it. So so a church on mission is a church that embraces that we exist to, to see futures rewritten. Secondly, we, there's a willingness. We embrace a willingness to sacrifice. 
a willingness to sacrifice. We lean into sacrifice. What is the church on mission? We lean into sacrifice. Let's go back to the same passage. And all who believed were together and had all things in common, and they were selling their possessions and belongings and distributing the proceeds to all as any had need. And day by day, attending the temple together and breaking bread in their homes, they received their food with glad and generous hearts, praising God, having favor with all the people. And the Lord added to their number those being saved. They were fixated on meeting needs. They found ways to meet the needs of not only people within the church, people in their community. They were looking for, out for that, that heart of the early church was, we're not gonna leave here without doing everything in our power to meet needs, to be the church, to sell possessions, whatever, belongings, distribute as, it, as needs presented themselves. They exhibited, a, it was an infectious love. The church, it was profound. Like if this is, you're new to the church, maybe new to legacy. We had a gal get baptized in the first gathering, Mary. When Mary walked in, she walked into a, 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 a meet the team, dinner with the team. And uh, her husband had just died of, three months earlier and literally just was weeping. She said, I haven't been in a church since high school and Mary is probably closer to my age, right? So it's been a long time and, and just the, the grace of just dinner with the team, kind of walked in steps. Neighbors are the ones that invited her. Neighbors invited her to the Christmas Eve service and she just got baptized today in the first gathering. It's like, there's just something about it, an infectious love. They exhibited a profound love. It wasn't forced or awkward or weird. No one was self-seeking. People checked their pride at the door. And the compelling presence of God was in their midst. And it was undeniable. So much so that when the community around it, and I want us to connect the dots here. When the community around saw it, they were drawn in. The Lord added to their number. Our job is just to be faithful, just keep preaching the gospel, loving people, serving our community, preach the gospel, love people, serve our community, and the Lord added to their number those that were being saved. When the world looks at the church, when the unbeliever saw the love and the generosity and their faith and their purpose, it was infectious. That old song we used to sing, come on, somebody help me. And they'll know we are Christians by our love, right? By our love. It was infectious. When our city looks inside Legacy Church, my prayer is when they see us in the marketplace or at work or in the neighborhood, what are they seeing? I pray they see a church that's willing to embrace a heart of sacrifice, a church on mission. And lastly, they had a concerted belief, a, a, a life code, a creed that said this, the miracles in the many. You could see it. I mean, if you read this passage one more time, look at how many times the word all is listed there. And all who believe were together and had all things in common. And they were selling their possessions and belongings and distributing the proceeds to all as any had need. And day by day, attending the temple together, breaking bread, they received their food with glad and sincere, generous hearts, praising God and having favor with all the people. And the Lord added to their number those who were being saved. There's a pattern. The pattern is all participating in what God was doing. That's vision. They saw what God was doing. They jumped in, said, we're all in, man. Let's go. Let's go. And the Lord added to their number. They jumped in. They participated. God added the number. Everyone did something. The miracles in the many. The miracles in the many. We have an opportunity in front of us, legacy. We have a, a massive opportunity in front of us. See, the story of Legacy Church is the story of a God who's leading us and providing all the way from the beginning, even to sitting in this building, the way this building came into our hands. We launched out of this church. And for six and a half years, through a, again, through a pandemic, we were able to be here and grow a church and get really comfortable. You're not looking at a pastor who wanted to start a building program. I want to build a big building. This has been pretty comfortable, right? Our issue is we have growing pains, and our issue centers around two things, space and time. 
space, and time. We have 70 parking spots. After the first gathering, one of the guys, we were just getting ready to wrap up the first gathering, and uh, Andrew came up to me, whispered in my ear, we have no parking in the lot. We have no parking even in the, in the library lot, the, that satellite spot over there where we park. There's no place for people to go. Like, we got to get them out of here, right? That kind of thing. Yeah. We have no, 70 spots. And we have a limited building. We have one office. We have one adult classroom. We, we, we kind of turn our, our rooms to make them multi-use, right? Like the youth and the kids use spaces. We have a conference room that becomes the toddler room. It, it, like the elders meet and, it, and it, sometimes, you know, we just, you don't know what you're gonna walk into because we try to make the best use of the space. I really believe we've been good stewards of this building for almost seven years. Now, come on. I really believe it. We've, We've used every square inch of this building, every square foot possible. It's been awesome. Uh, the, the, the little kitchenette, really it's a break room. Come on, let's be honest. It's a break room. Uh, we've served meals out of that thing. We've, we've done a lot of stuff out of the break room. The, how about, should I just, the bathrooms, ladies and gentlemen, right? The, the bathrooms, like you've, you have endured uh, insufficient bathrooms. Space is limited. What about time? Time. Time is short. The city of Liberty Lake has been so gracious in working with us. They've already extended our lease. By, so we were, our lease was due to end this year, October. And we just sat down with them a couple of weeks ago. And they said, we'll go ahead and extend that out to April of 2025. We're like, thank you, Jesus. And thank you, city of Liberty Lake. They've been very gracious with us, very generous with that. And then they even asked us that come back in the fall and we'll let you know where we are with the plans for this building to become a, it, what it's going to be a, a library uh, after we uh, exit the space. And so there's a possibility of even that, that time going month by month. So we've known this. We've known changes in our... So we, about a year ago, we started looking for longer than a year ago. We started looking for other spaces, other land or properties or buildings. Like maybe we can retrofit a church into a building. Then we don't have to build something. It might be a lot more inexpensive to do that. And so we looked for buildings in Liberty Lake. We felt committed to be in this city. And, and nothing. I mean, we actually, actually got to go through one building off of Apple... I like call it the kindred building. We walked through that building and, and actually walked out of the back of that building and looked out on some property. Uh, and we were, we were actually at that time considering this is the STCU. Number one is the STCU parking lot. Keep praying about that, right? Okay, so the STCU parking lot. But we were, we were looking at lot three and four and didn't know that there was actually another lot in here. I won't go into the great detail on this other than to say we needed to find out who lot two belonged to. Long story short, lot two belonged to somebody who goes to Legacy Church. We, we, we didn't know that. I said, like, you have the Israel of the whole, like, you, this is the promised land. It ties everything together. So I, 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 I called the guy and we drove on the lot. We parked here and we walked out onto this space. And I said to the gentleman who they wished to remain anonymous, I just, do you know about this property? He goes, yeah, it's mine. I said, it, what would be the possibility of re, you know, drawing some lines and boundaries and, and absolutely. So we bought this. We bought four, two, and three. We have entrance on to, from Madsen. We have access from uh, Mission. And the city of Liberty Lake said, even though our building's gonna go back here, they're still gonna let us be the church on Mission. There was a little tug of war going on there. You just asked Kelsey. We're like, ah, Madsen, no, we can't have Madsen address. No, we have Mission. <laughs> anyway, another story. So, we bought the land, and we're paying for the land. Again, right in the heart of Liberty Lake. Let me just say this about land. When you, when you buy physical property, physical ground, it's a spiritual matter. Make no mistake, it's a spiritual matter. Took the ground. It sends a message, get this, to the gates of hell. We're not going anywhere. We're here. We're going to settle in this community. It speaks of permanence. 
It's foundational to the city. The enemy hates it because the church is a place of hope. He hates it because it's a place of uh, changed lives, a place that confesses Christ as Lord. The church on mission is a place of redemption where futures are rewritten. We bought the land. And it's time. Uh, and now it's time to consider putting a building on that land. We haven't done a lot with it. We haven't talked about it a lot. We are, we are definitely not a campaign fatigue church. We've been trying to really just do the work behind the scenes to get us to this place. And so Legacy Church, are you ready for this? Are you ready? How many, how many have not seen the building? How many have not seen? Wave at me if you've not seen. Oh, there's a few. Okay. Legacy Church, here's your future building. Check it out. Come on, give it up. <laughs> Over 250 parking spots, just by the way. Right? Yeah. So, so here it is. Here's the, here's the building. And we, in order to just be fiscally sound and, and uh, wise, we had to divide this up into, it's actually three, three uh, phases. Uh, phase one is everything you see here forward. So the main auditorium is a 522-seat auditorium, a commons area. Uh, and so this would be facing to the south. Uh, and backstage area with restrooms, changing rooms for baptismal, uh, baptism uh, tank, uh, and then a green room, all that. Offices, a meeting room, small me a commercial kitchen, everybody. Come on. Commercial kitchen uh, and, and plenty of bathrooms, right? There is a mezzanine, an upstairs area with more offices and com conference rooms, adult classrooms. So that'll be uh, helpful as well. Phase two, this, everything that you see here in, uh, is that blue? I was, blue or purple? I think it's, okay, both. Uh, this is the kids' wing. So phase two will be a kid's wing with a kid's auditorium, classrooms, preschool. And my prayer is once we build phase one, somebody's going to come in and say, how much is that kid's space? Come on. What do we got to do to finish it? What, what is that? And they're just going to say, let me just let, come on, right? And we got to believe that way. So in the meantime, though, we're going to create, uh, we're going to get creative with creating kid's spaces here and here and then along future office spaces will be uh, for our kids in that first phase. So there it is. I mean, it's pretty exciting, and I'm going to move along quickly. What I want to do just now is all I want you to, we're not going to receive an offering, so everybody say thank you, Jesus, for that, right? So just relax. Uh, but I want to talk just quickly some numbers because this is how I want you to pray. You're going to all get one of these on your way out today, and it's the miracle in the many. It is our place of promise building project it's kind of lays out it gives you pictures when you leave today we want you to stop by the there's a, a place of promise overflow just in the off the lobby there and you can see some up close pictures and kelsey's back there our project manager you have any questions you can ask her uh, but so wait what we did is we began in october when we purchased the land uh 
with an original goal for the, for the land of $1.2 million, 1.2. And that was our kind of our goal to, to secure the land. And 93 of you, 93 of, have invested in that and are investing in that, giving towards that. And I want to just say thank you. I want to say thank you for doing that. Thank you for jumping in and helping us secure that land and kind of continue paying on that land. Now, to put a building on the dirt, to start the project. Now, here, so, get, so just get ready. To start the project, we met with our financing company to help us, like how can we kind of offset the, the entire project. This building is a $7.5 million phase one building. Okay? 7.5, take a deep breath, 7.5 million. So, to, so 1.2 is where we started to, to begin the process of putting a shovel in the dirt. Our financing company said, you need to come up with 3.6, 3.6. Deep breath, you kind of go, okay, all right. So this is gonna be, this will be our new, uh, sort of our new number, we would think. Except that we, many of you, again, 93 of you have been giving towards, investing in, uh, putting money towards the project. Uh, and, and actually some of you, like before we even launched Place of Promise, over the years, you've just been giving towards the building fund. You just thought, you know what? This church is gonna need to build something soon, so I'm gonna start putting, and you have done that. You've gone onto our website, and you've just been responding. I wanna say thank you. So that from our Place of Promise campaign giving and those building fund monies, we have raised $789,410. Can we just give it up? That's awesome. So now, our, our, the new remaining amount to begin the project is, we're taking this 3.6 million, we're subtracting the 789,410 to put a shovel in the ground to get started. We're gonna need $2.9 million to start the project. And I know those are big numbers, but how many know we serve a big God? And I'm just telling you. And, and, and let's not forget what our why is. This is our why. Our why is transform lives or what space and time space and time and there's just all that we got to look at and say god um, it, you know the phases now let me just show you this is a kind of a cool angle here phase one actually is so you would have this built from here that way this back here is phase three it's a gymnasium folks it's a gymnasium youth center so we want to have that for the community uh, and then over here is that that beautiful kids wing and so the, all of those costs, uh, that 2.9 will help us to get the, 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 the asphalt, the, the, the plants, the, I mean, all the, get this first phase done and move. And, uh, and my prayer is, and over the next 10 weeks, we're gonna ask you to just begin to pray. Actually, you're gonna leave here today with this and just my prayers you as, as a family, as a couple, as an as a, uh, individual, just begin to pray, God, what would you have us do? Now, here's, here's the thing, and, and we'll leave with this. I, I literally asked God, I, this, is, you know, this is a tough place to stand in this moment. And I felt like the Lord whispered into my heart one morning. I can't even tell you when it happened, but I just heard in my spirit miracles. Gary, the miracles in the many. The miracles in the many, like call the people to come for it. like everybody go home everybody do a 360 in your whole world in your life in your finances in your just like what can we do to to bring it back the miracles in the many as many of us that can jump in and be a part of what God's the miracles in the many so th this was uh our future house to, is to be realized, if it's to be realized, the miracles in the many. God gave us that. So the, those of you that are, uh, that are already in and already giving, already involved, I'm gonna say, keep going, keep going, don't stop. We're gonna refresh the, the campaign. We're gonna, we're gonna kind of refresh and relaunch, restart with these new numbers in mind. And actually, here's how you can pray with us as well. Right now, how many know interest rates are a little crazy? Right? So we're facing that. And so we're actually challenging our financing company to say, hey, 
you know, we're going to look around a little bit. We're going to try to find something with lower interest rates. And so there's people who know numbers a lot better than the guy that's standing up here right now. And they're, they're, they're going to help us. And we're going to pray that we can drive those interest rate numbers down and just get something um, that will uh, get us moving even quicker. Uh, you heard the timeline. The timeline is if we can put a shovel in the ground like in September, we could actually get in the building, actually be in the building uh, by April, May of 2025, maybe more towards the summer, right? So if, we, if we can get a shovel in and work with the city, they'll help, they'll work with us that way. So the longer we delay, it just is what it is, it's gonna push us out and uh, there may be a little season in there. We have to be a mobile church, whatever that looks like. We're just saying, God, it's your church. I'm not gonna lose sleep over that. It just, it's your church. And we're not, let me say this, and we're not gonna be a high pressure community. We're just not gonna do that. That's not my style. That's not who I am. And you know that if you're around here. So D.L. Moody said it this way. Our greatest fear should not be of failure, but of succeeding at something that really doesn't matter. That really doesn't matter. And I think the church matters. I think it matters. And we've talked about that today. So I want you to ask the Lord this question. When you go home and you take this and you look around, Lord, what would you have us do? What can we do? And it, it's interesting. It's, it's, a, it's the, to, where, to where we all feel like there's a sacrifice. It's, it's kind of equal sacrifice. It's not an equal amount, but it's equal sacrifice where we all feel a sense of God, we're, we're vested, we're doing this, we're going forward. And the Lord reminds me, if you forget the why, you'll lose your way. And the why is what we just saw here today. Can we stand together? Thank you for your patience. We did pretty good considering all that happened today. Amen? Amen. Amen. Thank you for your patience with that. I wanna read one thing to you as the band comes and gets us ready to lead us in this song. You got to go back to the beginning, Genesis 1. And God said, let there be light. New Living Translation says, and that's what happened. Then God said, let there be a space between the waters to separate the waters of the heavens from the waters of the earth. And, and, and say it with me, come on. And that's what happened. Then God said, let there be sea and land. And that's what happened. Then God said, let the land sprout with vegetation and trees, sun, moon, fish, animals, and that's what happened. And God saw that it was good. God saw that it was good. God said, and that's what happened. And he continues to say, and he continues to do. What this reminds me of today is that nothing's too hard for our God. What he says can and will be done. There's nothing too hard for him. God said, here it is, let there be a church. Build a church in Liberty Lake that will draw people to me, to hear about me, to experience my presence and power and find me. That's the why. And the Lord added to their number those who were saved. Let there be a church. God said, a powerful church where my name is lifted high and everyone, everything else is secondary. Let there be a church where men and women, boys and girls, come to know me as Lord and Savior and King. God said, let there be a church. And that's what happened. <laughs> I prophesied this word. And this is, I'm just going to put on a pro prophetic, not pathetic, a prophetic pastor's hat for just a second. Here's how I want to pray. I wanna pray blessing over you. I've talked to people who know that we're, we're moving into a building thing and, and they've come up to me and said, you know, Gary, if I'm praying this, would you pray with me? They've asked me, this business deal, if this business deal goes through, we're gonna, I'm gonna be able to really, right? And I said, you know what I say? I'll be praying, right? I'll be praying. I know there are people who have just, lost jobs, all right? Guess what, I'm, I'm praying God bless you. Why? Because blessed to be a blessing. Blessed to be a blessing. That is, that's the church. The miracles in the many were blessed to be a blessing. 
So if you're comfortable to just sort of hold your hand out this way, I just wanna pray a prayer of faith over you. Lord Jesus, I pray jobs to be realized. I pray, I know this, we're not a prosperity church, but God, I pray for those, those business deals that are on hold because of the economy or global unrest, whatever, for those things to close and go through. Blessed to be a blessing. I pray for raises, God. I pray for resources in the most creative ways to happen, God. Blessed to be a blessing. That we would be astounded. It's the same God who parted the Red Sea. The same God who created the heavens and the earth from nothing. Would pave a way so that futures can be rewritten in this city and long outlive me for generations to come. You do it, Lord. It's your church. It's not my church. It's yours. I'm here because you called me to this moment. So lead your church, God. Speak to hearts. Speak to your people. Open doors. Open resources, God, I pray. In Jesus' name. Amen. Let's sing. Let's worship.